So for working with Darren, I have worked with him once before in a feature, so I knew that he is somebody who um, just has always a really clear vision of what he wants, and he's creative and collaborative. I really enjoy working with him because he has great ideas, he has really good instincts, but he also gives people the freedom to bring their own ideas to the table, uh, and that, as a creative, it's amazing because you feel like you know you can do what you want. I think he has really good taste, <laughs> um, and his taste is a little bit, you know, it's not, he doesn't always go for the safe choice, which is really nice. For Chris Rock's character of Zeke, a lot of the inspiration came from reality. So we had this idea of doing it as a film noir, so I took a lot of references from 40s and 50s styling, but it was still very contemporary. And Chris's ideas that he brought to the table were he really wanted it to feel like this is a real cop. He said to me over the phone in our first conversation, you know, this guy makes $30,000 a year and he has to give half of it to his ex-wife. He, he said, everybody, I've hosted the Oscars three times. Everybody knows what Chris Rock looks like in a nice suit. I don't want it to look like that. So we really tried to keep it realistic with, you know, not perfectly tailored. He wanted off the rack. There is a certain sheen that cheap fabric has and a certain way that a cheap suit falls. Um, and that's what he really wanted. So that's what we did. He's wearing, you know, off the rack mall clothing. Darren also had great notes from speaking to real detectives that these guys anticipate getting dirty in the field. So they're not going to wear, they're going to wear, wear clothes that they could get blood on them, they could get vomit on them, clothes that are not expensive, clothes that they can you know, throw in the wash, throw away if they need to. Um, and so in terms of where his clothing came from and how it fit him, it's intentionally a, a little bit shabby. And then with elements for the film noir, we tried to keep it classic with um, you know, more of a, a knit tie, a tie that has a print that's more of um, like a 50s style of a print. He wears this beautiful shoulder holster as his gun holster, and that I think adds to the, the look that Darren was wanting. I mean, he's a retired police captain, so we wanted to go very, you know, what you think of as a classic police officer. He comes from a military background, so I think that his clothing is practical, it's well cared for. Um, in speaking with him and his team, he's also somebody who likes to use costume to get into character. We know that he works a lot, and we've seen him as a lot of different characters and a lot of different people, so I tried really hard to not make him look like any of the other characters, and that's important to him. We heard that he likes to wear glasses and wigs just to help him not be one of the other characters that he's played in his past you know, 120 movies. Um, so we, we kept it very classic and clean. I don't think he would be an ostentatious dresser, um, just practical, but playing around with some texture. We have a beautiful seersucker shirt on him. It's supposed to be hot, it's summertime, um, but we still wanted to give him a little bit of texture and interest. So for the character of Captain Angie Garza, she is, of course, a beautiful woman, and she's also the captain of the police force. We wanted to keep her costumes functional and practical. This is a woman who, she's in the office, she can't be in a super sexy pencil skirt and high heels because at a moment's notice, she may have to run out of there and you know do some sort of police work. She is the captain and she really commands the respect of the entire police force. But I also didn't want to shy away from her looking feminine and beautiful because I think Especially, you know, in the past, I think women thought that they had to dress like men to get the respect and the power, like I have to really cover up or I have to wear a boxy suit, like that kind of 80s working girl shoulder pads and dress like a man to be successful in a man's world. And still keeping her conservative and appropriate, I didn't want to play down the fact that she is a beautiful woman and I think that those two things can coexist. You can be beautiful and you can look like a woman and you can also get the respect of your colleagues because those two things should not be mutually exclusive. Um, so I tried to push it forward a bit in that sense. And I had some great conversations with Alex Cavanaugh who had designed, I think, saws two through five or six. 
Uh, and she had some great notes about the original jigsaw cloak, her version of the jigsaw cloak, that it had been, she'd worked with Darren on Saw 2, and because Jigsaw was, I think, in palliative care, he wanted it to almost feel like a bathrobe. And for this modern iteration of the Jigsaw Cloak, we kept the color dark, we kept the, um, the shaping of a hood. In our case, one of the considerations is that it has to go over this very large prosthetic pig head. So we had to sculpt a hood that would cover the pig's head from various angles too, so that you can shoot it from the side and you might see like the tip of a snout poking out, but I wanted to give them the latitude to be able to shoot him from the side and you don't know that there's a pig mask underneath until he turns to the camera. And then also playing with the proportions of the hood so that you can't tell from behind that it's not a regular head in the hood.